And good morning again from snowbound Washington, where we got nearly two feet of snow yesterday as the Senate Democratic leaders were claiming that they finally had the vote of Senator Ben Nelson of Nebraska, and that gave them the 60 votes they need to pass health care reform in the Senate. Final vote now scheduled to come at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. The bill is massive, more than 2,000 pages. Basically, it extends yeah. insurance coverage to 31 million Americans who are not now covered. It creates nonprofit insurance exchanges where people can purchase insurance, and it does not include the so-called public option that is a government-run plan similar to Medicare. The cost, an estimated $871 billion over the next decade. This bill also tightens restrictions on funding for abortion. It has many other provisions, including barring insurance companies from denying coverage to people with pre-existing conditions. It will be paid for by new taxes on employers who provide health care, by various fees on medical services and procedures, and taxes on some high-cost plans themselves. All our guests are in the studio with us this morning. We begin with Republican Senator, and appropriately enough, Senator <laughs> Olympia Snow, who's with us this morning. Uh, she was believed to be the most likely Republican uh, to vote for this bill. In the end, Senator, uh, you decided not to vote for it. Thank you for joining us this morning. I appreciate Why, it. in the end, did you decide you couldn't do it? Well, uh, Bob, um, at this point, anyways, um, I deeply regret that because uh, I frankly, I've been fully immersed in this process for a better part of the year, both my staff and myself, uh, because I'm committed uh, to health care reform. I believe that the current situation is unacceptable and uh, unconscionable when you think about rising health care costs. And that's why as the only Republican on the Finance Committee, I voted uh, for legislation. I did have some problems with that particular legislation, but I said at the time, the credibility of the process going forward would determine the credibility of the outcome. So here we are today with a bill that's dramatically different, more expansive than the Finance Committee. In fact, it's 1,200 pages more uh, than the Finance Committee legislation. Uh, it was placed on the floor just short of three weeks ago, 400 amendments, and only two dozen have been considered or voted upon. And 400 amendments are not unusual since each of the committees that have considered the legislation uh, have had more than 500 amendments. Then. Um, Less than 24 hours yesterday, we get a 400-page amendment that was filed by the Senate Majority Leader. Uh, we are scheduled to vote on that major amendment uh, 15 hours from now at 1 o'clock uh, in the mo morning with no opportunity to amend it. All to get done, the entire bill, with no opportunity to amend it, to change it by Christmas, so that we can adjourn for a three-week recess for a bill that doesn't uh, become implemented until 2014. Well, what was the tipping point for you? What was it that happened that made you say, I just can't do it? Well, I sort of threw a number of issues. I have been in countless meetings, um, every, meetings and telephone calls, uh, meetings with the president, uh, meeting with the majority leader, a, a number of people across, across the aisle without question. The problem is the bill became bigger. Uh, the, it, it has the Class Act, which is a whole new entitlement. Uh, that frankly will, will be, uh, turn in the red uh, five years after the benefits begin. Now, what is that? Uh, it's, a, uh, it's for long-term care insurance, and okay. it's a whole new entitlement. In fact, half of those revenues that will be set aside for a, a vesting period will be used to calculate the deficit reduction over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's where they derive half of their deficit uh, reduction. Then you have a whole new layer of taxes. Uh, the Medicare payroll tax, and we have uh, good tax subsidies, and I applaud Senator Landrieu that you'll be hearing from in a moment, uh, on those tax subsidies for small businesses. But on the other hand, you have a 1% Medicare payroll tax uh, on small businesses, affecting them disproportionately at a time we're depending on them to create jobs to lead us out of this recession. Uh, it, it's not indexed for inflation. It's a 62% increase. So this will be devastating uh, for small business as well. I have submitted a CBO letter th uh, on December 3rd with substantial questions on what is the premium cost for every American who will be participating in the exchange. What, is, what can they expect? If they're sitting around their kitchen table, they expect certain answers to certain questions. We don't have those answers to those questions. And that's why I indicated to hold off, I said to the President, and I said to the Senate Majority Leader and others, please give us the time. Come back after the new year. Get mm -hmm. together. This is a generational issue that has substantial uh, effects 
with, in, in fact, I would say mm -hmm. sweeping effects because you're, cal you're recalculating one-sixth of our economy. Right. And uh, frankly, uh, we're treating it as if it's a legislative appropriations at the end of the year. It's like the last train leaving the station, we're going to dump everything in there. Let me uh, ask you this. It's my understanding that even after uh, Leader Reid announced that he had the 60th vote, mm -hmm. the 60 votes he needs, uh, you, s you met again with the President Obama. What was, what was that about? Correct. Uh, the president, uh, you know, and I have, have worked together on this issue, and uh, I applaud him uh, for, you know, his knowledge, his grasp of the issue. It's his major and highest domestic initiative mm -hmm. um, uh, on this issue, and he wants to get it done uh, this year, and encouraging me to uh, support the legislation. And as I indicated to him, I'll continue to work through a House and Senate conference, but the legislation that is pending, this process denies us the ability to thoroughly and carefully and deliberately evaluate what is at stake. I mean, we're talking about reordering $33 trillion over what the next do you, 10 years. Uh, was the reason for this meeting, was uh, he asking you to vote for this thing uh, when it comes, Thanks, comes out of conflict? No, it was the pending legislation. But you told him that you couldn't I, I, I had, uh, yes, that I had problems because the process is denying me and others, for that matter, uh, the opportunity to amend it on a big bill. Why Christmas is not, there's no magic deadline. This beat the clock is really overruling let me legislative ask you, sanity. Let me ask you about the uh, abortion uh, language mm -hmm. in here. Uh, Senator Nelson insisted that the abortion language be tightened on what money could be spent on abortions in these insurance policies. Uh, but now, uh, he's satisfied, but now the, uh, the right to life folks, the anti-abortion people, say they're not satisfied with it. But the, pro, but the people who favor abortion say they're not satisfied with it either. Are you, how do you feel about that? Well, I, I uh, helped uh, to work on the underlying legislation and the provision that basically, you know, embrace the, sta you know, the status quo, making sure that we're not using any federal funds to finance uh, abortion, using a, 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 a precedent that's already exist in domestic family planning programs, international family planning programs, as well as Medicaid. I think there's 17 states that separate their funds. They're not commingled. That is a process that's worked time and again. Uh, and I think it's regrettable that it's reached this point with respect to this issue because clearly what is in the current legislation should have satisfied those concerns. It was every attempt to write it as it is an existing law that would not use any federal funds to finance abortion. All right. Senator So, thank you very much for thank coming you. in on a very snowy day here Thank in you. Washington.